Okay, this is going to be the first video on the integration of power series. Now, if you haven't done it yet, I would watch the previous two videos were on differentiation of power series. You might want to watch those first just to get an idea of kind of how the format's going to work on this. Now, as far as integration of power series goes, a couple of reasons you might want to do this. One of them, and this is what we're going to demonstrate in this video, is that uh, you can use integration uh, to find an easier way to find new power series. So in some cases, integral integration of existing power series uh, provides a quicker way to find a new power series. And then a second use is that you can use integration of power series to find uh, the integrals of functions that otherwise you would not be able to find because you don't have a rule to cover that situation. But in this video, we're just going to do a simple integration of an existing power series to come up with a new power series. Now what we'd like in this is this. We'd like to find a power series for the sine of x. Now you've already done this previously in the course, and what we did is uh, use the formal definition of a Taylor series, and you might remember you went through, you had to find the coefficients, so you had to find the first derivative of the sine, uh, the second derivative, the third derivative, the fourth derivative, and so on. And you use that information to come up with the coefficients for the Taylor series, and eventually you came up with a definition for the sine, uh, a power series for the sine of x, but it took quite a bit of work. What we'd like to do now is just show you a different way of doing this. Suppose that you started with a power series for the cosine and used integration to quickly get a power series for the sine. And this will all be based on the fault. Uh, and you, of course you know this from earlier in the course, but if you take the integral of the cosine, so suppose we started with this, the integral of the cosine of x, and if you find that antiderivative, um, the integral of the cosine would be equal to the sine of x uh, plus some kind of a constant if we did it with indefinite integration. So based on this, is starting with the cosine, uh, find the antiderivative, and you'll have the sine plus a constant. So that's what we'll do. So to begin with, we start by just going to your tables and looking up uh, the basic power series for the cosine. And if you did, we'll just go ahead and write that down. <clears throat> so it'll look like this. So the cosine of x, and this is something that you should have run across before, will look like this. This is in the expanded form, and this is in summation notation. Now when you find the antiderivative, you can actually do it either in expanded form or uh, summation form. So just like we did in the previous videos, we'll go ahead and find both of these together. And we'll do that by dividing this thing up into columns. So let's put just a couple of columns here. Uh, we'll do the expanded form in this column, summation form in this column. So let's run through this and see what it's going to look like. Now the idea is, starting with the cosine, what we'll do is take, um, find the integral of the cosine of x uh, dx. And then what that's going to give you, and then just do the same thing with this expanded form. This would be the integral of, and I'll just write out this uh, power series. So 1x squared divided by 2 factorial. Um, and so on. So you've got x to the fourth divided by 4 factorial, and then minus x to the sixth divided by 6 factorial, and uh, it goes on forever. Then we'll do this with respect to x. And then finally, um, in summation form, we'll do exactly the same thing. We'll find the integral, and it's just going to be of this entire thing. So the integral of the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of, then this would be minus 1 to the n, um, x to the 2n, and just rewrite this again, over 2n factorial. And then we'll take that entire integral again with respect to x. So basically just integrate all sides. Okay, now on this one, um, we'll do, in the last video we did differentiation, we did it in a method called term-by-term -term differentiation. When you find integrals, you do exactly the same, it's just term-by-term -term integration. So all you do is just find the antiderivative of each term using the power rule. So the antiderivative of 1 would be x then you've got a minus. Now on this one, you have x squared, so the antiderivative would be x cubed divided by 3. So this is going to become x cubed 
divided by 3. But remember, you've also got this times 2 factorial. So we'll put that right there. So times 2 factorial. Then you've got plus. This will become x to the 5th divided by 5. So x to the 5th divided by 5. But remember, you've also got this 4 factorial. Then minus, this would be x to the 7th divided by 7 then times 6 factorial, and then plus, and so on. So it's going to look like that. Um, now, on this one, let's do the same thing. Um, we'll actually just run through the antiderivative of this using the same rules. So what this is going to be would be the summation from n equals 0 to infinity, and... Now you've got the constant uh, minus 1 to the n. Now again, just like before over here, you uh, increase the exponent by 1 and divide it by the new exponent. Do the same thing right here. This used to be x to the 2n, so now it's going to be, if you increase it by 1, it would be 2n plus 1. And then you divide by the new exponent, which would also be 2n plus 1. Then still times this 2n factorial. So that will be 2n factorial. Um, now, since this is indefinite integrals, I think I'll go ahead and put this in red. Strictly speaking, uh, you should always add, just like we added a c up here, each one of these could have a c in front of it, could have a constant, so I'll put that constant right there, and c plus this. But we're going to, in this basic form, we're going to assume here that this constant would be 0, just to show that it uh, will turn into the uh, power series definition for the sign that we're looking for. So now, um, let's go ahead and simplify each one of these. So you know that the antiderivative of the cosine is the sine, so this one is going to turn into the sine of x, and it's equal to, and we'll take each one of these. Here's the x, and just a little algebra trick here. If you take 3 times 2 factorial, we'll go ahead and put here as the x cubed. But 3 times 2 factorial can be written as 3 factorial. Because it's just like this is the leading term times this. So it's like you factored out the first term. Now you can put them back together and make it be 3 factorial. Then you've got plus x to the fifth. And 5 times 4 factorial is 5 factorial then minus x to the 7th, and 7 times 6 factorial would be 7 factorial, plus, and it goes on. And then finally, we'll do the same thing to simplify this one over here. Uh, this would be equal to the summation uh, from n equals 0 to infinity. And again, you've still got the minus 1 to the n power. You've got x to the 2n plus 1. And then finally, you can go ahead and take these two and put them together, just like you put these together over here. So again, 7 times 6 factorial became 7 factorial. If you multiply this one together, then this would become uh, 2n plus 1 factorial. You can put them together. Now hopefully you'll recognize this is the same power series for the sine, including the same summation formula that you had when you did it the long way using the full definition of uh, Taylor series. So it's just a quick way of doing it. So again, one use of integration of power series is to, given one basic uh, power series, use integration to transform it and easily find a second, in this case changing the cosine into the sine. So in the next video, We'll look at another use of uh, integration of power series, but that will involve finding the integrals, definite integrals, of problems that you do not have an existing rule for.